we have 3.3 volt in this fuse this resistor we have 3.3 volt also this resistor 3.3 volt in this capacitor 3.3 volt here we have the bias if we go to the back of this board as you see guys we have the super ion do you see super ion here and bios here next to this connection you gonna find the charge ic here we don't have the charge ic means if we go to the back of this motherboard we have the charge ic this is how we locate ic's and the circuit of the motherboard this is the circuit for the driver inductor capacitor mosfets for the processor this is the circuit and if we move on here we have the graphic card and we have a circuit so always use the inductor to locate the circuit hi again please don't miss this video because i'm going to teach you for the first time how to locate the bios chip fastly in any motherboard second how to test and check the super ios serviceability Third, how to locate motherboard circuits fastly without schematic, including charge circuit, RAM circuit, CPU circuit, chipset circuits, etc. Finally, I'm going to teach you all about MOSFETs, 3P MOSFETs and H pom MOSFETs, the working principle and how to test it step by step. But please don't forget to subscribe, share and like the video because your likes really motivate me to create more videos for you. Thank you very much and let's get started. How to locate the BIOS in every motherboard. So please pay attention. Always the BIOS, you gonna find it near to the ICH or the PCH. Here we have the BIOS near to the PCH. If you find the PCH or the ICH, you're gonna find the BIOS near to it. So let's check another motherboard. Please pay attention. Here we have another motherboard. This is the BIOS near to the ICH and near to the SIO. So the BIOS usually is near to these two components. Let's check another motherboard to be sure. Here we have the Super IO. This is the Super IO. If just behind the Super IO, okay, in the other si side, as you can see, we have the BIOS. Do you see? We have the BIOS in this motherboard also. We have the PCH, we have the BIOS. So this is how to locate the BIOS in the motherboard. Now let's move on and let's check the Super IO or SIO circuit. So this is basically the SIO circuit. I'm going to teach you how to know about the voltages for this circuit and how to check if the Super IO is good or not. Without wasting a lot of time, I will teach you a simple way to know about if the Super IO is good or not. So let's get started. This is the Super IO. So around the Super IO, we have many small components. We called it SMD component or surface mounted device component. So if we check this component around the Super IO, as you can see, we have 3.3 volt in this fuse. This resistor, we have 3.3 volt. Also this resistor, 3.3 volt. In this capacitor, 3.3 volt. If we go to this side, for example, this side, we have this capacitor, 3.3 volt. This one also, as you can see, this capacitor also, this resistor also. Also, this side we have this capacitor, 3.3 volt. This capacitor, 3.3 volt. So means we have 3.3 volt everywhere in the super IO. So this. 3.3 volts that we find here are for inputs and outputs because for super IO it controls all ICs. For example, this IC control the, the charge IC, control the IC for 3 volt 5 volt circuit, the 3 volt 5 volt control. So all the, those ICs send 
power go to this super IO and the power go voltage is 3.3 volt and more than that guys is that the super IO is powered by 3.3 volt always do you see here we have 3.3 volt this 3.3 volt inductor is connected directly to the super IO we can even check using the multimeter let's put the multimeter to the continuity option here we have continuity option over here one probe here in the 3.3 volt inductor do you see we have this pin we have zero a very low reading means this pin is connected directly to 3.3 volt always means the super io or the, the 3.3 volt channel feed the super io please before diving into the course we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video pcb way pcb way offers many services ranging from pcb production and assembly to 3d printing and a variety of materials cnc machining sheet metals fabrication injection molding and more pcb way makes it easy to get custom parts for your project and if you don't like to work a lot with the soldering iron they can even assemble your pcbs for you that's the pcb way now back to the video when you find that around the super io mini 3.3 volts means that the super io is good means also that the inputs and the outputs are good so this is for the super io how to locate the circuits in every motherboard without the schematic i will tell you how so when you take the motherboard like this always try to locate first the dc connector and the battery connector so usually for about 90 percent of motherboards near of the dc connector and the battery connector you're gonna find the charge circuit like this one do you see the charge circuit you can find it in this side or in the back of the motherboard and also as i told you before next to the sio you will find the bios okay and then you should locate also two inductors or coils when you find two inductors ne next to each other means this is the 3.3 volts circuit and because this is the 3.3 volt circuit this ic is the 3.3 volt 5 volt control ic okay and then of course if we move on here to the processor for the processor each inductor means a channel for the processor of course you can find always or usually for the processor you will not find just one channel no the processor you will find two channels or more because the processor needs a very accurate and exact voltage and in order to avoid overheated channels so we have two channels or even three channels so these two channels is for the processor okay and the same if we go here to the pch if you didn't find induction also you can find an electrostatic capacitor or polarized capacitor but we have this inductor here so this is the channel for the pch this pch okay and then if we move on here we have the ram we have here the ram and we have this channel next to the ram inductor capacitor always for every channel you, you gonna find inductor capacitor okay so this channel is for the run so the same working principle for all motherboards we can even see another motherboard we gonna find the same working principle do you see this motherboards let me just take a look to this motherboard here always try to locate the dc connector and the battery connector and next to the to this connector you're gonna find the charge ic here we don't have the charge ic it means if we go to the back of this motherboard we have the charge ic 
Do you see, guys? This is how we locate the ICs and the circuit of the motherboard. So we have the charge IC. Why this is the charge IC? Because or because we have the DC connector and also we have here the battery connector. So this is the charge circuit. Okay. And as I told you before here, as, I, as we have seen before, we have the BIOS. Always try to locate the BIOS. Always the BIOS is bigger in terms of size. The BIOS is always bigger than the MOSFET. Here we have MOSFET, here we have MOSFET, and here we have the BIOS. So please try, don't confuse between BIOS and MOSFET. The BIOS is always bigger than MOSFET. This is how you can locate the BIOS. In terms of size, it is bigger. So, And as I told you before, always the BIOS should be next to the Super I.O. or to do IC hits. If Here we have the BIOS. If we go to the back of this board, as, as you see, guys, we have the Super I.O. Do you see? Super I.O. here. And bios here okay for all motherboards so here this is the charge circuit and the charge ic is here and for this circuit do you see this circuit here we have two inductors next to each other two inductors means this is 3.3 volt and 5 volt circuit so for the ram do you see for the ram here we have its circuit. This is the circuit for the RAM. Inductor, capacitor, MOSFETs. For the processor, this is the circuit. Two inductors, as you can see, two inductors. Always, as I told you before, for the processor, you're gonna find two inductors or two channels or more. Okay? And this inductor, it's not like those in terms of color and size. So this inductor is for this chipset. This is basically the not bridge. And if we move on here, we have the graphic card and we have a circuit. So always use the inductor to locate the circuit. So for the graphic card, this is its circuit. We have inductor MOSFETs. Okay? So this is, guys, how we can locate uh, uh basically the circuits in the motherboards for the mosfets we have basically uh, in the motherboard you can find three kind of mosfets a mosfet with a three terminals or a mosfet with eight terminals for example this kind of mosfet do you see this kind of mosfet this is basically eight terminals mosfet Always you should locate the pin number one. Do you see here we have this dot? Do you see? We have this dot here. Means this is the pin number one. Pin number two. Pin number three. These three terminals are connected together. This is source. Now, how we can check if the MOSFET is good or not? To check if the MOSFET is good or not, we have basically two methods. The first method first is try always to touch the gate with the black probe like this and touch the ground in order to discharge the mosfet like this okay now this mosfet is discharged also this mosfet good now as i told you you should always locate the source and the drain here we have the source because we have this point here we have the source and we have the drain so if I put the red probe here in the stairs, okay, and the black the black probe in the drain, we get a reading. Do you see? We get a reading about 200 and 700. If I swap these terminals, I should not get anything. I get, do you see? Nothing in the multimeter. Means this MOSFET is good. But if you check the MOSFET, and you find uh, a continuity or a buzzer like like this means the MOSFET is bad. Of course, 
If you can remove this MOSFET from the board and check it outside, it will be good.